This video is brought to you by SeatGeek. SeatGeek takes tickets from all across the web and puts them into one area, making buying simple. They're rated on a scale from 1 to 100, so you know you're getting a good deal. Plus, if you haven't yet, use my promo code KTO for $20 off your first purchase. Shout out to SeatGeek for the sponsor. Now let's get back to the video. As the saying goes, the NFL stands for not for long. The top 10 picks from 2009 are a mix of pro bowlers, disappointments, and straight up busts. So let's get into it, starting with number 10. With the 10th pick in the 2009 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Michael Crabtree, wide receiver of Texas. Michael Crabtree had taken over college football by storm. After one of the most dominant freshman seasons we had ever seen by a wide receiver, he followed it up with another brilliant season, and perhaps the play of the year. Deep strike, the big man, Crabtree went on to set eight NCAA records, won the award for the nation's best wide receiver back to back, and graced the cover of NCAA Football 10. However, things got off to a rocky start in San Francisco, with a contract dispute that resulted in the longest holdout by a rookie in Niners history. He would end up missing the first five games, but when he finally returned to play, he led all rookie receivers in yards per game in 2009. He would never really dominate though. Even in his best year with the Niners, Crabtree wasn't in the top 10 in any receiving category. His best season was the year that the Niners went to the Super Bowl, and he did have a touchdown in that game. The following year, Crabtree would tear his Achilles during the offseason, which is one of the worst injuries to try and overcome. He still managed to make it back by the end of the 2013 season, just in time for another playoff run. The Niners would find themselves back in the NFC Championship. In the final seconds, one of the NFL's most infamous moments would go down. Crabtree would last one more season with the Niners before signing with the Raiders. He would see a bit of a career renaissance in Oakland, helping the Raiders return to the playoffs for the first time in 14 years. Overall, Crabtree never dominated like some thought he would. He was never a Pro Bowl receiver, but he still managed to put together a very solid career in the NFL. Now, he's currently a free agent after being released by the Arizona Cardinals earlier this season. With the ninth pick in the 2009 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select B.J. Raji. Coming out of Boston College, weighing over 330 pounds, the Packers drafted B.J. Raji as an interior defensive lineman. He was a non-factor his rookie year due to a nagging injury, but he started developing into the player the Packers thought he would be the following year in 2010 and during the playoffs, his legacy would become immortalized. He was the modern day William Perry. Perry had become famous during the Bears 1985 Super Bowl run, where they featured the defensive lineman as a fullback. Flash forward to 2010, the Packers are playing none other than the Chicago Bears, and guess who they brought in as a fullback? John Coon. They fake it to Coon and Rodgers will take it to the edge. Touchdown! He was the perfect decoy. They also used him in a similar situation the week before, but this wasn't why BJ Raji will be remembered. With six minutes to go in the NFC Championship, the Bears were looking to drive down the field and tie this game up. On third down and five, pressure. Pass is picked off, and who is it? Big BJ Raji for the touchdown. Line. He says that the Bears had the fridge, I'm the freezer. Well, I don't know what he calls himself when he's doing things like that defensively. This play was the dagger, and Green Bay went on to win the Super Bowl two weeks later. The following season would be Raji's one and only Pro Bowl appearance. Then, his career would slowly go downhill. The injuries would start to pile up, and during the 2016 offseason, Raji would officially announce his retirement from the NFL. He did say that he may return at some point, but as of now, he is still in retirement. 
The eighth pick years, in the 2009 the NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Eugene Monroe, <laughs> offensive tackle. As the third selected offensive tackle in 2009, Eugene Monroe was praised for his pass blocking, drawing comparisons to Hall of Famer Walter Jones. Eugene was a reliable tackle for the Jaguars over the course of his rookie contract. He started 62 of 65 games and was considered one of their best players. But then he was traded to the Baltimore Ravens four games into the 2013 season. His time in Baltimore was mauled by injuries. Ultimately, the Ravens would release him prior to the 2016 season. Even though other teams were interested in signing him, Eugene Monroe would announce his retirement on July 21st, 2016 at the age of 29. He has become an outspoken advocate for removing marijuana from the list of banned substances in the NFL. He was the first active NFL player to openly advocate for the use of cannabinoids to treat chronic pain and sports-related injuries. With the seventh pick in the 2009 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select Darius Hayward Bay. Because that is a classic Al Davis pick. Hayward Bay was the fastest player at the Combine that year. Even though he was noted for having inconsistent hands and Michael Crabtree was right there for the taking, his size and speed were too much for the Raiders' front office to look past. Man, Jamarcus Russell's big arm and Hayward Bay's speed? The sky was the limit for this offense. But in all seriousness, Hayward Bay never produced like the Raiders had hoped. He'd had some highlight-worthy moments, but even in his best season, he had less than 1,000 yards and just over a 50% catch rate, which isn't all that good. His most recognized moment was a scary one. He was knocked unconscious in the end zone in 2012. He laid motionless for more than 10 minutes before being placed in an ambulance. Following that season, he was released by the Raiders. He would later become a member of the Colts and Steelers as a third or fourth receiver. In 2018, the Steelers elected not to re-sign him, and he was out of the league following that. Overall, out of all the first round receivers picked in 2009, he was the least productive. With the sixth pick, the Cincinnati Bengals selected offensive tackle Andre Smith. He was initially thought to be possibly the number one overall pick, but after an unimpressive performance at his combine and pro day, his stock dropped a bit. He hardly saw the field in his first two seasons due to injuries, but things picked up in 2011 when he started 14 games. Overall, Andre Smith never turned into the player that the Bengals thought he would be. He was inconsistent, suffered a bunch of injuries, and was even noted for being out of shape at times. Despite this, he's still in the league 10 years after being drafted. Currently, he is a starter and the only player on this list so far that is still playing games this late into his career. With the fifth pick in the 2009 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Mark Sanchez, quarterback USC. Coming off a 9-7 season, all they really needed was a quarterback to make this team a Super Bowl contender, so they traded up in the draft to select Sanchez. After signing a five-year, $50 million contract, Mark Sanchez became the first rookie to start the season for the Jets since 1960. The Jets would go on to make the playoffs, but Mark Sanchez struggled throughout the season. He threw only 12 touchdowns compared to 20 interceptions. But in the playoffs, Mark Sanchez became the Sanchez. He became the second rookie quarterback ever to win two consecutive playoff games. All of a sudden, the Jets were making a serious run. If they could get through the Peyton Manning-led Indianapolis Colts, Mark Sanchez would be starting in the Super Bowl. After getting the Jets up 17 to six, the Colts would come storming back to win that game. However, the following year, the Jets would return to the playoffs and their first round matchup was against the Colts. Mark Sanchez struggled, but when it mattered most, he led the Jets down the field to set up the game winning field goal. Then the following week, the Jets had to go play in New England, the place where all underdogs go to die. Down snap.
This would be the high point of his career. The Jets would go on to lose in the AFC Championship, and they have not returned to the playoffs since. His career would decline rather quickly. Two years later was the infamous butt fumble, and his last year in New York. He became a journeyman backup for the next four years, and announced his retirement prior to the 2019 season. Mark Sanchez was ultimately a disappointment. He had never truly developed into the player that the Jets hoped he'd be, but at least he gets to say that he started in two AFC championships and beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. Now, he works as a college football analyst for ESPN. Picks two through four saw the same kind of story. The number four overall pick, Aaron Curry, was considered the safest pick in the draft. He lasted just over two seasons in Seattle before being traded and out of the league by 2012. The number three overall pick, Tyson Jackson, was supposed to be the ideal 3-4 defensive end. After a very underwhelming five years in Kansas City, he went to Atlanta, received less playing time, and failed to record a single sack in three seasons before he was out of the league. The number two overall pick, Jason Smith, was a can't-miss prospect. You can't go wrong with this kid. Whatever his ceiling is, he's going to achieve it. He was out of the league by 2013. These three were each guaranteed over $30 million. That's just downright ridiculous. With the first pick in the 2009 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Matthew Stafford. Early in his football days, Matt Stafford was destined to be great. He was the number one QB out of high school, and back then, Mel Kuyper said that he would eventually be the number one pick. Among all these terrible top 10 picks, Matt Stafford actually lived up to expectations. By his third year, he had thrown for 5,000 yards in a single season and led the Lions to the playoffs for the first time in 12 years. His 2011 season started a streak of six years in a row with over 4,000 passing yards. If he retired today, he would be in the top 20 all time for both passing yards and touchdowns. Even though he's out for the rest of this season, Stafford is only 31. He could possibly play for another five to 10 years. If he can keep it up at the level he's been playing at, the Hall of Fame could be in his future. Remember, because of that extra point, they need a touchdown. Stafford completes the ball into the end zone. Touchdown! Pressure, and they tuck it away, and run for it inside the five, and he's in! 